Hi friends, welcome back. Or if you're joining us for the first time, welcome to the channel. I am T and this is my YouTube channel, Crumpsy and Sewing. Today, I want to share with you a pattern review of the New Look N6766. This is a reproduction of a Vogue pattern that was released earlier this uh, last year. Uh, so the New Look N6766 was just released earlier last year. And um, it's a reproduction of the Vogue pattern that has been around for quite some time. Um, and I want to give you my thoughts and my impressions of my sewing make and tell you about the pattern. So first let's start with the features of the pattern and then I'll get into the size selection that I chose and then the garment that I made. So the features of the pattern, it is a plunging V neckline with a long sleeve. So you have the option to do a long bishop sleeve that has a cuff at the end of the sleeve. And then you also have ties that you can tie on the back of the garment because it is kind of like a looser fitting style. It's meant to go over your head. And so you don't have any type of closures. So it is a looser style that you will tie in the back of the garment to cinch in the waist. It has an empire waistline. And what that means is that the waistline does not rest near or at your waist. It actually is higher up right underneath the bust area. So if you're someone who does not like empire waistlines, this might not be the dress pattern for you. You also have different skirt lengths and skirt options, including a short skirt that has a little bit of a small little ruffle. And then you have a longer skirt that you can choose as well. And I believe that is all the features of the pattern. It's a pretty simple, easy, um, straightforward uh, pattern. You don't have any closures. You will be using bias binding to close off the neckline's raw edge. And that's pretty much all you're getting with the pattern. Now, I did make some alterations to my pattern because I did not like the plunging neckline. And so I will tell you about the modifications and the adjustments that I have made. Um, in terms of the sizing, you get uh, this pattern in one group of sizes and the size range is eight to 18. I select, I'll give you uh, two examples of what you're getting in terms of the finished garment measurements. So I selected the size 14 and that 14 is 43 and a half inches for the bus. I can definitely go down the size and select the size 12, which is a 41 and a half for the bus. My bus measures at a 39 inches or 40. And so that uh, one and a half to two inches would be just perfect. It's just, I went up a size because I'm always nervous when they size the patterns, uh, the commercial patterns, when a size 14 is a 43 and a half inches for the bus. That's normally not the case. For 43 and a half inches for the bus, we're usually looking at a size 16 or 18. So I was a little bit nervous because it was two sizes uh, smaller than what I would normally select for a commercial pattern. And so I started with the size 14. I could definitely go down to the size 12. Now, in terms of the alterations and adjustments that I have made, I did not like the plunging V neckline. And so I wanted a little bit more coverage. And so in order to do that, I decided to increase the pattern at the fullest part of my bust area and also a little bit um, upwards at the top point of my cleavage as well. And in doing that, I did alter the pattern a little bit beyond the patterns design. So just keep in mind, if you do that, there are some alterations and adjustments that you need to uh, take into consideration when you're doing that. The pattern for the bodice of this pattern, it is meant to be an open, um, kind of like a plunging V shape. And so for people like me, who is a C, D cup or higher, if you're looking for something with coverage, this pattern is not going to do that for you. If you're looking um, at sewing this um, and you have an A, B cup, then you may, depending on how full your bust um, is, 
you may be able to sew this and not have those issues. But for someone like me, I did have issues um, and I tried to rectify those issues by increasing the pattern's neckline. I did make a, a little bit of a sewing tutorial on how you can actually create um, an increase near your the fullest part of your bust and also at the top of your cleavage. I made a tutorial on how you can do that with this pattern and I will upload that pattern um, uh, that uh, sewing tutorial after this video. I just wanted to provide some context for that um, that sewing adjustment in the um, the way of this pattern review so that you can actually know what you're getting into before sewing um, something like that. Uh, because of that, I had to make a few alterations to the um, Empire waistline a little bit because again, this is a bit of a plunging neckline. And because of that, the front of the bodice is open. And so instead of overlapping, they kind of sew um, really close together instead of actually overlapping like you would a normal faux wrap top. It has a little bit of a gap um, so that the neckline can fall open a little bit. So just keep those things in mind when you are sewing this. This is um, not a pattern that's going to give you full coverage if you're looking for full coverage. It is meant to be a little bit more on the sexy side. And I knew that going in and I was prepared to make modifications and alterations to that. Again, if you are looking to make modifications and alterations to your bodice front as I did, check out my sewing tutorial. I will be uploading that pretty soon. So let's go ahead and talk about the modifications that I made in terms of standard adjustments that I usually make for my body. So I did do a, a half an inch forward shoulder adjustment because the pattern was a little bit back um, for me. And so I had to bring that back piece forward so that my shoulder line would rest on my, so that the, sh the seam of the garment would rest on my shoulder line. So I did do that half an inch forward shoulder adjustment. I had to lengthen the empire waistline by an inch because otherwise it would have been sitting uh, right uh, at the top or like resting like right underneath my breast instead of like having a little bit of room um, underneath the breast because the empire waistline, um, yes, it's supposed to rest underneath the breast, but not like on the breast. And before I did the adjustment, it was like right, like it, it, it's really weird, but it wasn't specifically on the breast, but it was close enough that I felt very uncomfortable with the position of it. And so I did, uh, lengthen it by an inch. And so you might want to pay attention to that as well. Other modifications that I did, let's see, I, I, instead of actually adding the, the, um, ruffle to the bottom of my skirt, I decided to just leave my skirt. And so I don't have a ruffle or a band or anything like that at the lower edge of my skirt. And so I just did a really scant, um, I believe a half an inch um, or a five eighths of an inch seam allowance uh, for the hem of my skirt. And the reason why I did that is because I was unhappy with the finished results of this, uh, this dress because the waistline was not perfect. And I will share with you what I mean. Um, the, Pattern itself would be really great, but I would caution you um, not to use any type of silky, very, very slippery, silky fabrics. Uh, the fabric that I was working with was from Morex Fabrics. It was a piece that was sponsored to me and it has a beautiful, beautiful drape, so much so that I would not have used it for this particular um project if I knew I was going to have the problems that I did with the fabric because it's so, um, it moves a lot and it uh, has like a lot of uh, f fluid drape within the piece. Um, that waistline um, just kind of shifted and it just does not look very good for 
an empire waistline. You do want to have some fabric that has structure in it when you are creating uh, waistlines like this because you don't want the fabric that you're working with to kind of shift and move. And some fabrics are like that. They will shift and move even after you've sewn the seams together. And I have found that to be the case with this particular uh, dress pattern here. The, the seam line is just, it looks as if I sewed it and it is a, it's just a disaster. It's because the fabric just would not hold up for this type of design. So I would definitely say, make sure that you choose your fabric wisely. I would choose a little bit more of a stable fabric, maybe a cotton lawn. If you want something that's really lightweight for summer, I would say a voile or even a soft a drapey, um, not too stiff of a cotton poplin. You do have some uh, cotton poplin blends that you can actually work with, but I would definitely say choose something that's more stable because I have found that the, my empire waistline is a mess because of the, the fabric choice that I have made. And so because of that, I decided to kind of stop the project where I was at and not add um, a flounce to the bottom or a, a ruffle piece to the bottom of the skirt. I just wanted to save the fabric because I did not like the actual finished um, product. And so I just wanted to save that fabric and I decided to use the additional, I think it's like a yard of fabric that's left. Um, I'm going to use that as a top and I think it would be better suited as a really nice drapey um, dolman style type top. And so that's why I decided not to add the ruffle to this because this did not turn out at all how I had hoped. My particular bodice is wrapped over. And so uh, take note of that as well, that when you go into the project, it's not going to look like this if you sew it straight out of the envelope. Uh, I do feel like you would probably need some snaps if you're going to do it the way that I have done it. And I have put snaps um, on uh, the cleavage part to keep it closed. Um, I also created um, a wider bias binding. So as I uh, uh, stated before, the pattern does come with a pattern that you can cut your bias binding out with. I actually cut a wider bias binding piece, I believe. No, it does not come with bias binding. I'm sorry, a, a, a bias binding um, piece. I actually created a bias binding um, out of the fabric that I was sewing with. And I sewed that to the neckline after making my alterations. And so you can do that as well because the design is. Um, so that you're overlapping the bodice front pieces. Uh, you can definitely create that bias binding and put that bias binding on and then sew the seams together. Like once you sew it and sew your skirt to the bodice, you won't see the bias binding at all. And so you could definitely do it that way as well. Overall, I did like the pattern. However, the fabric choice that I made, I think was a poor fabric choice. I am going to put this in the pile of like the dud of the year because it just didn't turn out the way in which I had hope. I might actually unpick uh, a lot of this work so that I could try to save the fabric and make something else with it because I just did not uh, like the way that the Empire waistline turned out. Um, but the size that I chose was okay. I could go down to the size 12, I believe, and um, kind of make it so that I don't have extra room in the bust area because the size 14, I do have quite a bit of fabric that is um, on the side near the bust um, that I want to get rid of. And that extra fabric is because the size is a little bit too big for me. So I would like to go down to the size 12 and possibly even make this in a cotton sateen or some type of oil type fabric. And then I will come back and give you my um, review on how it sews with an actual cotton fabric instead of a rayon chalet fabric. The fabric, I would say, um, I didn't really like the way that the fabric had washed. Uh, the first time that I put it into the wash, I put a, a color, one of those color sheets inside the wash that actually 
um, kind of removes a lot of the excess uh, color from your fabric so that it doesn't bleed throughout your fabric. I forget what those color sheets are called, but I'll put it here so you can see what it looks like. Uh, but I did put that in the wash with it so that I can make sure that it didn't bleed on like that the fabric didn't bleed on the background of the fabric because it's a gorgeous fabric and it has a lot of different colors. And when I'm working with fabrics like that, I like to try to um, catch a lot of the color out of the fabric before it bleeds onto the fabric. And so I did use that. And then I had noticed after I took it out of the wash and I put it in the dryer and everything goes on delicate, no matter what I'm working on, even if it's a fabric that does not need to go on delicate, I usually put all my fabrics on a very, very delicate cycle. And I have a really good machine that can take care of those types of fabrics. In this case, um, I didn't like the way that the fabric washed, unfortunately, even though it's a gorgeous fabric, I did not like the way that it washed. It bled a lot. And I'm so glad that I put the color catching sheet sheets inside the wash because it would have been an absolute disaster um, afterwards to get all the ink stains and things like that out of the garment like um, when you're sewing you know you use your your fabric pens to get all the fabric um, ink stains out I decided to wash by hand instead of washing by machine because I knew it had the issue with the color and I'll put an image here and you can see just how much, and this is the second wash, you can see how much color is still coming out of this. Uh, so I didn't like the fabric for that reason. I feel like I will have to wash it alone uh, a few more times to make sure that all the dye is out and that it's not bleeding because if I wash it with something else, it will definitely bleed on other things. So other than that, um, I thought that it sewed uh, pretty decently. It did fray uh, beyond the seams a little bit. And so I had to surge. And so that was another issue. But, uh, but I mean, it's a gorgeous fabric. I'm willing to work with it and try to do my best to get um, good garments out of it because it's a gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. It just has a little bit of issues. Um, and that's my honest review of that. So anyway, um, I had fun making this. If you've made this pattern before, you've had a different um, experience, please share with us what your experience was like and what kind of fabric you used. Uh, if you like today's video, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel if you love today's video or any videos on my channel. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts and I will talk to you all in the next video. Bye.